This video is part two to my protein structure video. In this video, we'll be looking at the peptide bond formation that happens during translation elongation. The peptide bond formation is catalyzed in ribosomes by a special enzymatic activity called peptidyl transferase. Peptidyl transferase activity is going to be in the P site of a ribosome. During translation, an amino acyl tRNA will bind into the A site or the amino acyl site of an RNA, and it'll form a peptide bond with an existing polypeptide in the peptidyl site. Now the peptidyl site of a ribosome is roughly where this peptidyl transferase activity is. Virtually everything in genetics is going to have a directionality to it. Remember that DNA replication, transcription, and translation all occur in the 5' to 3' direction. Well, just like those, protein synthesis is going to have a directionality too. And it's going to go from the N terminus to the C terminus. That is, we're going to extend from this nitrogen group or the amino terminus to the C terminus or the carboxy terminus. And thus our amino acid chains are going to have polarity. They're going to have an N terminus and a C terminus, like a 5' and a 3' end. But know that unlike nucleic acids, there is not a 5' and a 3' end on proteins. Again, there's an amino and a carboxyl terminus. Peptide bond formation occurs when the lone pair on the amino group of the amino acyl amino acid attacks the carbonyl carbon of the peptidyl amino acid. Attack of this carbon forces the oxygen to leave, which frees the peptidyl RNA from the peptidyl tRNA, and it transfers it over to the amino acyl RNA. Thus, the peptide chain is transferred from the RNA in the P site to the RNA in the A site. So after the oxygen leaves and the polypeptide chain is transferred onto the other tRNA, we see that this also corresponds to the translocation of tRNA through the large subunit of the ribosome where this tRNA that was in the amino acyl site translocates into the P site, and this tRNA that was in the peptidyl or P site translocates into the E or exit site because it is now empty. As translation continues, we're going to continue doing this process over and over and over again where we have charged tRNA that enter into the amino acyl site, and then we're going to see the amino group on the amino acid in the amino acyl site is going to attack the C terminus of the polypeptide chain that's held by the tRNA in the peptidyl or the P site. And again, the polypeptide chain is going to be transferred to the tRNA in the amino acyl site, which is going to become the peptidyl tRNA, and that's going to force this peptidyl tRNA into the E site because it's now empty, and then that's going to exit. And it's just going to keep going on and on and on until we reach termination of translation. And as a final reminder, please remember that protein synthesis always occurs in the N to C direction, or from the amino terminus to the carboxylate terminus. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.